Hi everyone, this is Pasadena Community Church Pastor Charlie Reeb. Remember a year ago when these pictures were our dream? It took years of talking and fundraising and planning just to come up with the plans. We decided to go from 1,700 seats to 848, but every one of those seats would be a great view. We wanted to replace the old narrow seats with comfortable wide ones. We wanted to fresh up the dark wood panels on the altar. And we wanted to preserve some of the historic wood panels that our own members made decades ago. Well, wait until you see what we have to show you. The workers have installed all of the new chairs, and they are spectacular. These new chairs are a lot wider than the old ones and include some features you are going to love. For one thing, you'll be able to lift the armrest, like on an airplane, if you don't want a divider between you and the person next to you. And the handicap seating will allow you to flip a latch, and the side panel will open up so a person could easily slide from a wheelchair into a pew seat. The workers tell us that these are the most comfortable seats they have ever installed. And the seats are made so that they can be snapped into place in seconds, as you can see. So if a cushion needed to be replaced, no problem. Just snap a new one in. The covers on these seats are washable, so it makes for a very easy maintenance. The fabric is also color fast because, as you know, we get a lot of sunlight in the sanctuary. And this is it, the last seat to go in. One thing I love about this renovation is how we have preserved so much of our history. The walnut end panels that face the aisles have been spruced up and reinstalled. And of course the star will hang above it all. But notice, no dust or cobwebs in the ceiling. The workers have been busy outside too. Our iconic cross is dressed up in a new coat of white paint. And our team is turning the old broken fountains and overgrown shrubs into beautiful gardens. We are grateful to the team that has worked so hard fundraising and planning and managing this project. It is on budget and on time and you paid for it. We did all of this with no new debt. It's all coming together and we will open it up for worship August 6th. Soon we'll be announcing big plans for the reopening and dedication. You'll see this is more than new seats and a new paint job. It's a fresh rebirth of a great church that will serve our community and glorify God. I'm Charlie Reeb. I can't wait to see you here. Do you remember that? Few people do. Okay. This is what I know. And that is that as we have continued to look at the stuff in our house... What we have also figured out is that, or let me own this, what I have figured out is that it is a good idea that I could also spend a little time renovating myself as well. Okay, we sort of joked about this all along, you know, when I tried that brighter lipstick and, you know, whatever to sort of up my game. But I recognized that I just really needed some time off. So I called my friend Andy. And I said, you know what? Last year when you guys went to the ranch without me because I had an emergency, I need to go now. Are you up for it? And she said, when are you thinking? I said, I'm thinking like the second week in February. She said, just let me check my calendar. Yes, I'm up for it. I mean, it was pretty fast. We did have to check with our spouses to make sure that that was okay. But we had the plan set before we got off the phone. We went away. We, I mean, she's my travel buddy. We've done this for a long time. We went away. We did spa treatments. I did a lot of meditation classes. I hiked around. I did all this. I felt terrific. When I got home, Al said, you didn't take any more cooking classes? <laughs> and I said, no, I didn't. And he said, well, it's just as well because, you know, it didn't really work last time when you took the <laughs> cooking classes. I already owned that last week, okay? So I'm fixing dinner that first night. 
Now, our house is a 50s house, which I've also already explained to you. And some of the appliances, I'm pretty sure, are original. So anyway, I go over to our stovetop, and I turn on the eyes, and I'm ready to make pasta because I know how to do that really well. And so the big eye where I boil the water with the, just a touch of olive oil, it's my trick, just a touch of olive oil to put the pasta in there, I recognize that the big guy on the stove is no longer working. Well, and every other option I had was only about this size. So if you've ever tried to make pasta in a pot that's about, you know, so we didn't do that. So Al said, it's okay, don't worry about it. Just call tomorrow, go down, pick out another stovetop, get it I mean, get it installed. So I'm thinking, this is God's joke. Okay, so you went away for a week. You had the opportunity to take cooking classes, and you didn't do it. So now I'm giving you more incentive. A new stovetop. I mean, it's a tricked-out stovetop. I had to have, read the directions to learn how to use two of the eyes. Okay, so I'm ready. It's good. So... I'm starting on that, and I'm thinking, I got it, I got it. And then the next week, when I'm back at work, Maylan decides, our daughter, that that's a perfect time for her to come and visit. And I'm thinking that's good, too, because I'm at work and you're at home. And she loves to bake. I have a daughter who loves to bake. Cupcakes in particular. Red velvet cupcakes, to be specific. And so she said on Tuesday, okay, Mom, you have staff meeting today, right? And I said, yes. And she said, I'm thinking I'm going to make red velvet cupcakes and bring them to the office. And I said, oh, that is wonderful. Everybody's going to love it. And so she makes all of these red velvet cupcakes. She brings them to work. Everybody thinks it's awesome. They make fun of me, but they love the cupcakes. And I go home that night, and she's, she's more of a... Um, I'm hoping she's not watching. I didn't clear this. She, she is, she's more of a baker than she is a cleaner upper. <laughs> but she did a really good job of washing everything she used and left it in the sink. So when I come home, I'm drying all this. And I open up the cabinet to put the muffin tins and all that in there. And I discover, I promise you, Clearly, this is a cabinet that I don't open very often. But I open the cabinet and I discover that every single appliance in there that has to do with baking is mildewed. Yeah, we call it mold in some areas, but essentially mildewed. The good news was it wasn't making any of that noise that says that it's growing like So I'm thinking, okay, before I left, our dishwasher's been making a lot of noise, and so maybe there's some connection here. But in the whole renovation plan, we decided that the first thing, yeah, I'm hopping around. The first thing that we're going to do in our house is we're going to paint. You know, there's nothing like a fresh coat of paint to really snap up your life. So the next day, the painters were coming to get the whole list of things that I wanted to have done. And these are cool painters. This is Melissa and Tori, and Melissa is a painter extraordinaire. She's got paint all over her to demonstrate that. So they come in, and I said, would you just look at this and tell me what you think? So they open up the cabinet door and immediately go, whoa. And then Tori says, just a minute. So she opened up the panel on the bottom of the dishwasher and said, you've got one serious dishwasher leak going. So I called the plumber and said, I have a serious dishwasher leak going. And unlike when I told you the story last week of having the pipes to be re redone and the insurance didn't pay for it because there was no damage to the house this time, my cabinets are, like, going not so good. I mean, it was scary. You, you pull off one of those little boards, and you look, and you see that it's all scary under there. So, Tori and Melissa discovered the leak. I called 
the insurance company and said, you know, we've got a leak. And they said, don't worry about it. Call instantly because we'll get a team out there to drive. It's Friday night. So they come and they bring this gigantic big hot thing that you turn on with the fan and suck all of the moisture out of the room that went on for three days. The good news was we were forced to eat out for three days <laughs> because we couldn't really go in the kitchen. So, okay, so that's, that's the start of all of this. It's a renovation thing. You know, so I go in, I take my seat in the living room on the couch, and I turn on HGTV. I'm telling you, it's my go-to, it's my relax time, and I turn it on to my very favorite HGTV show, which is Fixer Upper. Now, there's, does anybody, have you, does anybody watch that? See, this is, you're better than you are last week with the love it or list it thing. I love <laughs> Joanna and Chip Gaines. I mean, you know, I would move to Waco just to have them do a house for us. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, just, I'm, I'm just mesmerized by this whole thing, and I'm thinking, look at them. It is so clear how much they love each other. It is so clear as I watch how much they love their children. It is so clear when I watch how much they love all of those farm animals that they have around. I mean, they keep getting new ones every time I watch. And I'm laughing that one time she said that he actually came home with a box of puppies. And she said, really? And they just took them all in because that's who they are, and it's what they do. And I love how they love their clients and how they work with them to find the perfect, really dilapidated, torn-up house to fix up. And I love how they look first and say, your foundation is shot. We're going to have to fix that before we can fix any other thing. Because if you don't take care of your foundation first, nothing else matters. It'll fall apart. Your whole house will just collapse around you. So guess what? I have a scripture. I'll bet if you think about it, you can figure out which one it is too. Good thing I have a nice left arm. All right. So I'm reading to you from Matthew 7. No, it is not on the screen because this is your opportunity to really home in to my voice. Okay? Ready? I'm also reading from the message because every now and then I just think it's nice to get a different perspective. These words I speak to you are not incidental additions to your life homeowner improvements to your standard of living. Notice how that just kind of works into where we are. They're foundational words to build a life on. If you work these words into your life, you're like a smart carpenter who builds his house on solid rock. Rain poured down, the river flooded, a tornado hit, but nothing moved that house. It was fixed to the rock. But if you just use my words in Bible studies and don't work them into your life, you're like a stupid carpenter, yes, I use the S word, who built his house on a sandy beach. When the storm rolled in and the waves came up, it collapsed like a house of cards. Think about that. If our lives don't reflect the Savior that we follow, the faith that we have, the love that we're called to share, if we don't follow, we are just fooling ourselves. We're building our houses on sand where the least little thing that happens in our lives can cause us to feel like our world is coming down around us. Did you ever have that experience before? 
to just feel like, I don't even know which way to turn now. I don't know what to do. But having that faith, having that strength of conviction of who we are and whose we are reminds us that whatever happens, whatever happens, we're going to be okay because God never promised us that would he, we would have a life that would be just apple cheek and dewy-eyed every day. Did he? No. What he promised was, whatever is going on in your life, I'm going to be there with you, and I'm going to be walking every step of the way, holding your hand. This smart builder, the wise builder, as other translations call him, the wise builder knows that storms are coming. We live in Florida. Is there anyone who doesn't know now what to do during hurricanes except maybe you because you've just moved here? We know. And we're prepared. We have a whole cabinet, not one that got molded, but one in the laundry room. We have a whole cabinet that is full of supplies because this is hurricane season. But what we also know is we don't do this by ourselves. God is with us. Our faith is strong. Our faith is strong. You saw the pictures. You saw the video. You saw what our newly renovated sanctuary is going to look like and sort of looks like now almost. It's awesome. You heard Charlie say that we have covered it financially through your gifts, through your dedication to the renovation. The foundation in the sanctuary is strong. It always has been. But we've got lessons to learn about that. Okay? Strong foundation, but if we go back in there, seeking the same seats, uh, yeah, seeking the same seats that we have always sat in, we're really missing out on something important. Because one of the things that I notice when I look around at all of you and the people in the chapel, hi guys, when I look around at all of you, is you're sitting in different seats. Imagine that. Some of you are even sitting with different people. Wow. Some of you are sitting with people that you've never laid eyes on before. Wow. And actually talking to them. Wow. If we take ourselves and go back into our old ways of being in the sanctuary, then the lessons that we have learned in Hamilton Auditorium and the chapel have been wasted. Because what God calls us to do is to love not only God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer, but also to love each other as we love ourselves. If we just dress up and put on new clothes to go in the new sanctuary for the first Sunday on the 6th of August, we're missing the boat. You know, when we put on new clothes for Easter, like it makes a difference, we put on new clothes for Christmas like it makes a difference. This is about putting on a new way of being in our hearts. Back to Chip and Joanne. The love that they have is palpable. It's palpable. And that comes from the foundation of faith on which they live. If you've read their book, if you've read magazines, if you've gone online and looked, and looked up YouTube, and you've done all this, and if you've done none, on, none of this, you have to take my word for it, because, and that would be a stretch. But what you get to do is to recognize that they 
are part of a movement that's called I'm second. I'm second. God first. Faith first. God first. Others and me second. Because that's the foundation that we lay our lives on. Okay? So I'm going to challenge you. This is a bit of a reach. But I'll bet you don't know that every single one of you in here has the ability to have a name tag. A name tag. Izzy has hers on. Think of what it would be like if you sat next to somebody you didn't know who actually had on a name tag and you could look at that person and associate the name with the face. Wouldn't that be remarkable? When I'm watching Fixer Up, they don't need name tags because there are only like four or five people that are involved in the build. But that's not who we are. And when we go back in there, if you choose not to wear a name tag, which everybody hates, you know, I get it, I don't wear one either, but I figure if you can't figure out who I am, then I'm really in trouble. But introduce yourselves. One of the things that I love in here is watching you meet and gather around with new people. In the sanctuary, we've laughed, Charlie and I both said, I mean, we pretty much know where you sit. <laughs> we pretty much know when you're there and when you're not there. And we pretty much know the people who sit around you. But you want to know what a real blessing is? I cannot tell you how many times over these years someone has come to me and said, you know the woman who sits in front of me every Sunday? She has not been here in a month. And I'm really worried. Now that's a gift. That's a gift. That's a foundation of faith that says I'm in community. And I care about the people who are in community with me. I care about them. It's like, you know, how many of you have, chil have children or like know any children? <laughs> you know, there has been an ad on TV that kind of runs periodically. And there are always articles about this that say, the best thing that parents can give their children or families can give each other is faith, a sense of family, and sitting down together to eat dinner every night or as many nights as you can. Now that seems sort of like not a whole lot. Faith, family, and fellowship. This probably is a time that I could admit to you that in our own looking around in our house at, you know, okay, here are the, all the spots of paint, 14 spots of paint that I've put around trying to figure out what color. What we did also see is that the oak dining table in our dining room that's part of our living room in our whole open part the oak dining table that was built in the early 1900s, it's one of those round ones with the claws and the ball feet and all that. The center of that is splitting. I mean, really splitting. And at one point recently, I moved it around a little bit more and it split a whole lot. And so we tied that together with my son Jacob's belt it's working, you know? But what we recognize is we, if we just left it like that, that really would be just putting a Band-Aid on something that is symbolic of a piece that has been in my family for many, many years and a piece around which we all gathered for sharing meals. And so collectively, we decided that it would be a really great thing to have that peace fully restored. 
And not only just to have that 48-inch round table fully restored, but it occurred to us that it would also be nice if we could invite friends over to eat with us. A little more of a food challenge. I know how to order. But to be able to extend that table with the two other leaves that we have that have never been used, but also to extend them in a way that they have aprons put on each side so it didn't look like there's just a, two boards going in the middle of the table and have it totally done so it could just be like that all the time so that it actually invites fellowship. Imagine that. And you know what? Probably mid-August, that's going to be return from our new friend, Russ, who is a furniture restorer. And it's all going to be sanded down. It's going to be repaired in every way that it needs to be repaired. It's going to have new stain on it, so it gets a new look. It's going to be stained driftwood, which is sort of like a little gray color. And it's going to be there as a representation of the foundation that I grew up on. Foundation of faith, family, and fellowship. But it's also going to be on the foundation that Al and I have established together in our family. And it's also going to be representative of the fact that we know that on our own, we can't make it. We never could have and never will. And Jacob's belt can't be the only thing that's holding the table together. God needs to hold the table together. Now and forevermore. I don't know what your foundation is like. I don't know what your relationship is like. I don't know how you share with other people. But what I do know is that we are called by our God to get better at it. We're called to get better at it. And in two weeks, we're called to go into a new beginning. Okay, so the altar has not been renovated and stained in driftwood. But it's there. Our ground. The reminder of who we are, whose we are, and that God calls us all the time. We get to listen. We get to take each step forward knowing that when the rains come and the wind blows and whether it's a hurricane or a tornado or just water in the streets, that our God walks beside us, that our foundation is solid and that we're not doing this life by ourselves. Thank you, Jesus. So there. Would you pray with me, please? Gracious Lord, we just thank you for every opportunity to notice how you work in our lives. We thank you for every opportunity to walk beside us, for us to feel your hand holding ours and reminding us that whatever is going on in our lives, if the hurricanes are threatening to take us out, if the tornadoes are coming our way, that we will not be shaken. We don't do it by ourselves. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Now let's stand and sing together. <laughs>